give God a great praise in this house. I believe, I believe that what God is getting ready to do is quick, fast, and in a hurry. And we cannot be a people that is expecting God to do it next year because we already in the new year. Y'all ain't talking. You can't expect God to do it next year because we already in the new year. Just look down your row and say, I am expecting God to do something quick, fast, and in a hurry. Please remain standing for these next few minutes. If, if you all would do me a favor at sound, if you just turn me up, I literally just flew in at 9 o'clock from L.A. and preached my service. But I, I'm honored to be a part of this great celebration for this great woman of God. In this hour that we live in, true leadership is hard to find. I'm going to talk to y'all over here. I said in the time that we live in, true leadership is hard to find. And, and someone would say, well, you're not a millennial or Generation Z. Well, I'm not. But thank God I've raised some millennial children. And thank God that I have a bridge that brings us across. And true leadership is not determined by how well you can preach. True leadership is not determined by how well you prophesy. True leadership is, how, is determined how well you lead a people into the promises of God. And so we celebrate this woman of God for being a tremendous leader. Not only did she been a tremendous leader, but she has surely at this point been an icon for women because she broke a many ceilings and did a lot of great things on behalf of the fact that she's still a lady. And so we praise God for her. Surely to all of the pastors in your respective places, I celebrate you. Amen. All the eldership, deacons, Amen. And to all of the men and women of God, I'm grateful to be here another time. I thank God for my son being with me today, Elder David. Amen. And for what God is doing in this life. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you and we thank you for how good you are. We thank you for how kind you are and how dutiful you are to us. We thank you that this is another season and this is another day. And so we bless your name. We thank you that we have gathered to give you glory, but we're also expecting you to do something for us. So, Father, we pray that even now that our ears and our hearts would be open and receptive. We thank you that you have never left us alone. And we thank you that as we come to this day to celebrate the woman of God, that God, that these ears that she have, that she would hear what you're saying in this hour. Thank you for movement in the atmosphere. Thank you for manifestation and thank you for the increase. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that even now someone would be delivered. I pray that even now that our faith would be enlarged. And we would be ever the strong and even the more courageous to do the assignment that you have given to us individually and collectively. Father, use me one more time to minister to these, your people, prophetically. When you're said and done, Father, we promise to put a praise on it. We thank you for the power of praise. We thank you that we can slap the devil in the head one more time. And we give you glory and we give you honor. Now do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could even ask or think. I said, Father, do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could even ask or think. I said, Father, do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can even ask or think. Thank you for doing it. In Jesus' name we do pray. If you agree with that prayer, amen, will you clap your hands and give God one more praise? If you would open your Bibles, open your Bibles and go with me just very quickly over to the book of Joshua. 
I have been trying to preach something else for the past couple of days, and every time I get ready to preach something else, the Lord said, you got to do it this way. Somebody say this way. This way. Amen. Joshua chapter number one. When you have it, say, I'm with you. <clears throat> Beginning at verse number five, the second clause. And it says, so I will be with thee, and I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. And verse number six says, be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give. Verse number seven reads as thus, only be thy strong and very courageous. And then if you drop down to verse number nine, it says, have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, wheresoever thou goest. And the word of the Lord is blessed. I, I just want to talk and prophesy a little bit. But just look at somebody and say, the Lord is with us. Let me just look at somebody and say, I, I want to encourage you. The Lord is with us. It is here that as we have come to this new year of 5784, we must realize that surely many of you have heard it, but let me do this because repetition is the month of learning, that we must realize that we are in a season of the open door. We must also realize that there are doors that will open and there will doors that will close. One of the greatest things about an open door is that it gives you access more th to more than one door. Will you look at somebody and say, this is the season that God's going to give me access to more than one door. Y'all kind of quiet. Yeah, he's going to bring me into some other things that I've never experienced before. He said that he didn't have to repeat a season. Look at somebody and say, this incoming year was not a repeated year. It was a year of new things. It was a year of new opportunities. It was a near year where you said you could not do it five years ago, but somebody prophesied back to me and say, I'm getting ready to do it now. I'm getting ready to do it now. And so it is. We must then understand that when God does something new he must prepare a people somebody say preparation yeah and one of the things that we must realize about these past three years and leading up to this year was that was a season of preparation this is not a season of preparation this is a season where you must be prepared y'all not talking back to me tag somebody and say you've got to be prepared you've got to be prepared this is no time to go back and read the manual again you've got to already have meditated on the manual read the manual digested the manual, reread the manual, and even had enough time to memorize the manual. <laughs> Tag somebody and say, you must be prepared. You must be prepared. You don't have no time to say, I'm going to sit here and wait until God do it. But if I could get about 12 people to jump up and say, I am prepared. I am prepared. If he wakes me up at 6 o'clock in the morning or 8 o'clock at night, I am prepared. If he says go left, I'm prepared. If he says go right, I'm prepared. Well, how do I know I'm prepared? Because my worship has changed. Not because I have a new degree or not because I have a new economic income, but because my worship has changed. Tag somebody and say, my worship has changed. My, my worship is not predicated whether or not I have a musician or not. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, something happens to me. When I think about the fact that so many people died and I'm still here, tag somebody and say, I'm still here. I'm still here. I should have lost my mind. I should be crazy by now, but I'm still here. The enemy tried to give me a heart attack, a stroke. I should be, but I'm not. I'm still, I'm still here because the Lord is with us. I promise you I'm not going to be here long. But tag somebody and say, I'm still here. And the reason that you're still here is because you have an assignment on your life. Huh? Tag somebody and say, you have an assignment on your life. Huh? And the thing that I love about God, Bishop, huh, is that I can't do my assignment without you. Huh? Because the Bible says that iron sharpens iron. Huh? I wish I had a church for 
moment. Uh, you've got to come to a place in this year that I cannot hang out with everybody. Uh, I cannot hang out with those that are still in the wilderness or have a wilderness mindset. Uh, tag somebody and say, I am not in the wilderness. Uh, I have now come into the promised land. Uh, I have given up manna because I uh, have the ability to grow my own corn. Uh, Y'all talk back to me for a moment. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, uh, if you can't sharpen me in this season, uh, I can't be with you. I can't be with you. Uh, I don't have no time to count numbers on Instagram. I can't worry about what TikTok is doing. Uh, I've got to be in a place that when I go up, uh, everybody around me is going up. Uh, just look down your row and say, everything around me uh, has got to be sharp in this season. You can't do what I can do, but if we can come together uh, and get it together, somebody say together, together. Uh, when you go up, I'm going up. Uh, tag somebody and say, we are not going down. Uh, say, been there, done that, I'm not going down. Uh, grab that neighbor by the hand and say, let's go up. It is sin if we clearly understand where we are and what God has for us, then we would be in a better mindset. We would be a better what mindset? We would be in a what? Better, better, better mindset. Somebody say a better mindset, a better mindset. But but it has been the plight of the enemy it has been the plight of the enemy to bring us to a place of low self-esteem. It has been the plight I wish I had a church over here uh, that even though I come to church and I speak in tongue, there's something about about my mind, my mind, my mind. There's something about how I perceive things. There's something about things that keep coming and I say, I can't do it. But I heard the Bible say that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Just look at somebody and say, the enemy has been messing with my mind. Uh, he's been trying to tell me that I can't do it. But if I could just get five people uh, to say, God's getting ready to strengthen me uh, from the inside out. Uh, because not only am I here but I'm here to perform an assignment it is then as we look at this that we must realize that it is the plight of the enemy to make us believe that just because we're here that we're not going to finish but I just want to stop and just put this little pin right here no matter how many doors that God opens the enemy is always going to throw you opposition will you look at somebody and say the enemy he's always going to do something because he's always on his job the Bible says that he comes to steal kill and destroy Joy. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if he was going to get me, he should have got me last week. If he was going to bring me down, he should have brought me down last week. If he was going to mess with me, he should have messed with me last week. But tag somebody and say, because I'm better in this season. I've got a power that I don't even have, that I don't even know where it came from. But I've been smeared by the anointing. Tag somebody and say, smeared by the anointing. He's smeared smears me to empower me. He smears me. I wish I had a church. I said he smeared me. He smeared me. That's why people have got to be careful in this season. Don't put your mouth on me because he said touch not my anointed and do my oh y'all help me over here. You don't have to be a prophet but you can be anointed. Look at your neighbor and say I am anointed. Say God has got me ready for where I'm going. It is then as we come to this book of Joshua. Joshua is a book of transition. Look at somebody and say transition. The thing about the church, Bishop, and I really came to preach to you, but the thing about the church is that it's always in a transition. That's how come people come and people go. And thank God for a woman of God that is not moved by who comes and who goes. Y'all talk back to me. Look at your neighbor and say, if they did it to Jesus, surely they'll do it to you. But Joshua is a book of people that are now in a new season. They're in a new culture. They've got to learn a new way. And we've got to be very careful in this hour that just because we're back in the sanctuary, it's not the same church that it was before COVID. Y'all talk back to 
to me. It's not the kind of people. We're not pastoring the kind of people that we pastored before COVID. You know, there was a generation, forgive me, but there was a generation when the leader said do something. They just did it. We didn't question leadership. We didn't put leadership to the test. We didn't even put Google before God. Y'all help me for a moment. Now we've come to a place that we are in that everything has to be questioned. Everything has to be accounted for. If the leader said it, you just believed it. And somebody said, well, why do I have to believe it? Because if you believe that your leader is the voice of God for your life, then you'll believe what the leader says. The difference is most people don't look for a pastor because a pastor gives you direction. They just look for a name. So for somebody that they can have an affiliation with, y'all talk back to me. But in this season, you've got to know that the Lord is going to be with you. You've got to have a pastor. Y'all quiet. I came to preach to the woman of God. Joshua, it's a book of transition. And he was now responsible for another generation. Oh, you're listening to me. He was what? He was responsible for a generation that had come from a group that were murmurers and complainers. Yeah, he was responsible for a group that had hung out in the wilderness and had a wilderness mindset that he now had to walk them through transformation. Y'all help me for a moment. He was now responsible for a group that would probably talk back to him and have no reverence for him because they saw him as an equal. Y'all talk back to me. There's a problem when you see your leader as an equal. Y'all don't like me today. I said there's a serious problem when you feel like you can say anything you want to say to him or her. And God is pleased with you. Look at somebody and say you've got to come to the place that you have a reverence. Because when you see your leader, you should hear the voice of God for your life and if you are not hearing that or you're hearing it and ignoring it you're a bastard and not a son and too many of us too many of us are living on the B side too many of us are living on the side that has no integrity. Too many of us are living on the side that has familiarity. Y'all help me for a moment. I'm going to slow down for a moment. We're getting ready to dance in a second. <laughs> but no matter how many times you ride in your leader's car, no matter how many times you're invited to sit at the dinner table, huh, nothing about you should ever become familiar. Nothing. Your commonality at the table should not become familiar. Joshua. Joshua was dealing with another kind of people. And at the same time, Joshua had to take these people to the promises of God. Y'all help me for a moment. Look at somebody and say, the Lord is with us. <laughs> 
And the thing that we must learn in this very season. I'm not talking about learning it in 2024. I'm talking about learning it before we get there. Tag somebody and say there's something that I've got to learn. Before I cross over according to the other calendar. There's something that I've got to know in my spirit. That this is my season. But I cannot do it without a leader. Because, because the leader has your destiny tied in them. You, you can have a great prophetic gift. Great. You see the trees moving and God talks to you. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> God talked to you 24 hours a day. It's amazing to me. You have a prophetic word for everybody. All day. And you take other people's members to prophesy to. It's amazing to me. It's amazing. You know, I'm a real prophet of God, so I'm never intimidated by faces. So y'all pray for me for a moment. But, but, but at the end of the day, when you have a real governmental office on your life, you don't have to snatch from nobody else. You don't have to impress nobody else. Y'all talk back to me. Because God will take up one and put another one down. And he'll make sure that you walk in from the back of the church to the front of the church. Look at somebody and say... You've got to be mindful in this season uh, that not only is God getting ready uh, to use you, uh, but you've got to always uh, be submitted to the leader. Uh, Y'all not talking back to me. Uh, as great as your gift is, uh, can I just preach like I'm feeling this thing? Uh, uh, gifts and callings come without repentance, uh, but a real leader uh, is never impressed with your gift. Uh, Y'all talk back to me. I thank God for your gift, but I am not impressed because if God snatches it, you won't have a gift. So it is my responsibility to shape you into character, shape you into prayer. It is my responsibility to shape you so after you come from under the Mashanda, you can balance your checkbook. We have become gift, gift top heavy. Gift top heavy. But the moment you leave the sanctuary, you have no integrity. Everything does not belong on the web. Everything does not belong on social media. You don't represent your brand. You represent her brand. You don't have a brand. She has the brand. Joshua had a brand. We get it all confused, Bishop. When they arrived, you were here. So it's your brand. When you work for Google, it's their brand. Y'all help me. <laughs> when you work for Apple, <laughs> it's their brand. You go in the Apple store in Roosevelt Field, they got shirts on that all have the same color. Huh? And they got an apple. Who, who are they representing? They're not representing Jack. They're not representing Jill. They're not representing Sarah and Abraham. They're representing Apple. Only in the church. 
Well, that's my brand. Well, I really can't post raw because it's going to interrupt my brand. It's not your brand. Y'all, I'm sorry, Bishop, but, 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 but I make no apologies. I really don't. But, 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 but Joshua now is in this place where he must develop a people that have no brand. And before God talks to them, he's got to talk to her. Because the sheep will always be the leader. But the leader must always be ahead of the sheep. Oh, Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Look at somebody and say, put it in the right equation. Yeah, you know, we, we did a little math. Put it in the right equation. Yeah, yeah, you cannot put the leader behind the sheep. Huh? You've got to put the leader ahead of the sheep. Y'all not, talk, not talking to me over here. You cannot think that you are equal to the sheep just because you're an elder. Huh? You're only an elder because they lay hands on you. Huh? You're only an elder because she gave you a portion of her anointing. Huh? Y'all not screaming back at me. Huh? No matter how grand you are, huh? how many notes you have, how many journals you took, at the end of the day, she may drive a hoop and you can have a Bentley. She's still. Joshua now has to know courageously that he cannot be intimidated by the ones that have come out of the wilderness. Because you know when you come through a transition. You got attitude. You know originally I'm from Brooklyn. And you know people from Brooklyn you know. They all got attitudes. <laughs> Somebody said I was in LA the other day. And they said you know Brooklyn people don't go to the Bronx. And I say in the Bronx don't come to Brooklyn. Because we got different attitudes. Y'all not talking to me over here. You know, it was only when I got to Long Island a few years back, I learned how to say Long Island, you know. But at the end of the day, there's some Brooklyn still in me. Joshua has now brought a people that he did not even select. He didn't select these people. Oh. They were just given to him. And you know, the thing that messes me up is that he had to love and like all of their crazy personalities. He had to learn them. He had to learn. Now, I can be tough with Pastor Williams, but I can't. I, gotta, I can yell at him and know that he's going to be found in his seat next Sunday. Y'all talking. Y'all got quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can yell at him and embarrass him. Oh, y'all quiet on this side. Because cause we, we are intimidated to embarrass you in this season because you'll stop paying your tithes. We're intimidated to, to correct you because you won't give an offering. Huh? But I can embarrass him, correct him, and he's still going to be in his seat. Because he understands whoever he is, God has to bring her to make him. But I couldn't. No, I'm not just messing with you, lady. But I couldn't, I couldn't correct her out loud. I had to say, baby, when you 
finishing church today, don't leave until you can come to my office. Because cause she couldn't handle my, my tough side, my alpha girl side, because I needed to jack her up real good so that when she came out, she'd never do it again. But if I did it publicly, ha, she may not come back again. Y'all not talking back to me. Help me up in here. Josh, can I finish this? Joshua now has a people. Some like him and some don't. And he has got to love all of them. Can I, can I park for one second and give you a little? So, so y'all know my husband died a couple years ago. And, uh, and you know, I'm, I was his wife for almost 35 years. And, uh, <laughs> and I say it all the time as a point of reference. I only had two pastors in my whole life. The late Bishop, uh, Bishop F.D. Washington was my pastor for 34 years. And then Bishop David was my pastor for 30 years. But, but my spiritual father, you know, he, he was, I was his daughter, you know, and he, he kind of gave me some leverage. But when I was married to my pastor, my bishop pastor husband, you know, he was tough because the man that he was at home was my husband. But the man that he was in church was my pastor and my bishop. I'm helping some of y'all trying to be wives to leaders. Because <laughs> I still had to sit on the second row and be an elder in the church. And one day, a situation occurred, and we had talked about this situation a couple times, and, you know, I, I thought I could just act out. You know, worst thing to do is to act out with a leader that knows that he or she is called to be a leader. Yeah, see, so you can act out with people that are on the fence, but worst thing to do is to act out with somebody that knows who they are. And, and so I, I acted out, Bishop, and then, and, and, you know, I got called in, you know, because he didn't want to upset the peoples. Uh, he said the peoples, uh, uh, but, 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 but I got sat down for like three months. Uh, I, I, I got to go home to this man that's my husband. Y'all yeah. not talking back to me. Uh, but, 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 and I had to perform my duties of keeping the house clean and being a girlfriend and, and holding his hand and, 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 and not putting poison in his food. Y'all know what I'm saying? I had to do all of those things. Just trying to help some of y'all. 90 days, he sat me down. And some of the saints started to mumber. You know, Bishop must have sat pastor down. Bishop must have sat pastor down. And you know, you hear people murmuring, and they scared to say something to you. So they just murmur among themselves. I didn't receive the tithes. I didn't receive the offering. I didn't make no little announcements. I just sat there. And after my 90 days was up, he said to me, as my pastor and my bishop, what did you learn? Because if you didn't learn anything, you got to go sit down again. <laughs> because if you get up too fast, you'll repeat the same cycle. I wish I had a church. I'm just trying to sit down here, but tap somebody. And so, so the long story to all of this, I didn't realize it then because I wasn't a preacher or a prophet. I had no indicators that any of this would be a part of my, my, my journey with God. But when your leader does something to you, it's not about the moment that you're in. It's about the correction for where you're going. That's just what I want to tell somebody. I don't know who I'm talking to. Ha, oh, but, but, but I am a better leader ha, I'm a better Christian ha, I'm a better saint ha, I'm a better elder y'all not helping me up in here because he had the nerve ha, and the capacity
capacity uh, to see something in me uh, that I could not see in myself. Uh, and while I was being silent uh, and seated, uh, I was gaining strength uh, to become what I was destined to be. Joshua. 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 Thank you, Bishop. Joshua. Joshua is now prepared to lead a people. Because there's more than just teaching people discipleship. You've got to teach them how to be quiet and when to talk. You've got to teach them <laughs> when to go after harvest and when to meet me for prayer meeting. Joshua is now ready for where he's going. But the one component that is necessary for Joshua is that he needs to know that the Lord is with him. I, I, I'm, I feel a dance coming on, but, but I want to slow it down because I, I, I want this house to know that you are not a great people because of who you are. You are not a great people because you have great musicians. You are not a great people because you have great singers. <laughs> you are not a great people because <laughs> you have pastors and elders that have been giving delegated responsibility. <laughs> but you are a great people because <laughs> the Lord is with her. <laughs> you don't understand what I'm saying. Because <laughs> I heard David said that the oil <laughs> starts at the head <laughs> and runs down <laughs> to the beard and to the skirt of the garment. You don't have no oil unless she's got oil. Y'all scream back at me. You don't have no anointing. It's her anointing. So Joshua is in this place now. Joshua's in this place <laughs> to ask somebody and say, God has to talk to Joshua. <laughs> because when God talks to Joshua, <laughs> then Joshua talks to you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you leave out of here. <laughs> and people say, you're amazing. <laughs> you leave out of here. <laughs> and people say, how did you know all of that? <laughs> and you say, you know, God was good to me. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. <laughs> we never give credit <laughs> to where credit is due. <laughs> you know, I sat under the woman of God <laughs> for these past 20 22 years and there were days that she corrected me there were days that she made me study the word there were days that she said something that I didn't understand and she came back and repeated it again so anything that you see on me it came from her y'all better scream back at me any kind of anointing that I got it was all the hell that she went through so that you would live life more abundantly So the word, so the word comes to Joshua. In verse number five, the word comes to him and he said, I will be with you. <laughs> word comes to him and says, I, <laughs> I will not fail you. <laughs> I'm not going to disappoint you. <laughs> and woman of God, I came to tell you tonight <laughs> that God's not going to fail you. <laughs> and he's not going to disappoint you. <laughs> he shunned it at the world somehow. <laughs> I came to read this word and he says, <laughs> and I will not forsake you. <laughs> I'm not going to turn my back on you. <laughs> I'm not going to walk away from you. <laughs> if all of these people walk away, <laughs> I'm going to be right there. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, the Lord is with us. <laughs> 
Y'all not screaming back at me. Uh, and then he comes right back. Uh, and he says, and this uh, is the only thing uh, that I require of you. Uh, only be thy strong uh, and of good courage. Uh, you know, I didn't know what strength was uh, until I lost Bishop. Uh, but strength is not me going to the gym uh, and trying to lose and lift weights. Uh, that is not strength. Uh, strength is uh, when you give me a gut punch uh, and I bounce right back. Uh, Y'all better talk back to me. Look at somebody. Say strength is when I'm crying at home and I come out here and preach my best message. That's what strength is. Strength is I'm going through hell. But every time I see you, I give you a hug and say, baby, keep on going. That's strength. Somebody scream at me and say, be strong. Strength is when I can go in my office and read his word. And when I went in there, I was frail. My shoulders weren't pulled back. And he took me over to something that said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Y'all not talking back to me. And all of a sudden, my tears went away. All of a sudden, my back got better. All of a sudden, I found a new energy. And it wasn't the energy from a bull. It was an energy from God. Y'all not screaming back at me. But tag somebody and say, be strong, woman of God. And then it says, and then he says, and have courage. You know, okay, y'all forgive me. No, you don't. You, you got to have courage in this hour to preach the word of God. You got to have courage to preach what God said would be his word from everlasting to everlasting. Because the culture now wants to dictate what you can say and what you can't say. But the word of God gives you courage. Y'all not talking back to me. I said the word of God gives you courage that whatever you are, come on in. Because the word ain't changing. And if the word ain't changing, I ain't changing it. Y'all better scream back at me. Tag somebody and say the word gives you the courage to say what God says. I don't have to make up something. I just got to what? Preach the word. The reason we're so weak is because we ain't preaching the word. You got to preach the word. It's the word that corrects you. It's the word that builds you up. It's not me patting you on the back. It's not me giving you fluff. You're not going to be rich and you can't keep a hundred dollars. You will always have bags with holes in it when you don't pay your tithes. Always. You spend $80 on your nails and we ask you for 20 and you kicking and screaming. But you want to ride in a Maserati. God would not be a just God to put you in something that you don't even have enough money to put gas in. You got to have courage. You have to have courage. You know, you know, Pastor, would you, would you agree with me? Would you agree with me, Pastor, um, for a four-bedroom uh, house and, and, and three-and-a-half baths and, and two-car garage? Would you agree with me, Pastor? And, and no. <laughs> no. No. How, 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 come you, how come you ain't going to agree with me, Pastor? Can I come to your one-bedroom right now? Can I walk in there? right now can I walk in before you go in (laughs) 
because he makes you ruler over a few things. Y'all not talking to me over here. Before he makes you ruler over a whole lot of stuff. Y'all not helping me in here. But when I get, when I get the four bedrooms and three and a half bath, I, I'm going to do better. No, that's not how God works. God says, how are you managing your hoopty before I put you in a Mercedes? God is trying to tell you, how are you managing the bathroom to a one bedroom? Do you have rings around the sink? When was the last time you washed the toilet? Y'all scream back at me because if you can't manage that, he's not going to do you have to be courageous yes, he says let me finish he says, be strong and of good courage unto this people that I shall divide for an inheritance because I swear it to their fathers. There are some things prophetically that God is going to release because he promised it to Bishop Boyd Sr. And now is the season that it's going to be passed down because he can trust you. There, there, he says, I have given them an inheritance. Look at somebody and say, I have given them an inheritance. An inheritance is something that your father leaves for you. Your grandfather leaves for you. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to earn it. It's just handed to you. Tag somebody and say her leaders that she served. This is the season of a pass down. Y'all not screaming back at me. This is a season. I wish I had a sanctified church. I said this is a season. This is the season that God said he swore and when he had nobody to swear to he swore to himself my last point is this he says he says I'm not adding anything to what I need you to do woman of God I heard the Holy Ghost say, don't add nothing else to your plate. Everything's on your plate. God says, I'm going to handle it. He says, but only be strong and very courageous. He said, everything else, I got control over. I got control over what the enemy tried to do. And his appointment has been destroyed. I've got, y'all ain't screaming back at me. I've got control over who walks in these doors and who don't walk in these doors. Because it is the door of access. Tag somebody and say, God is in control. The only thing you've got to be mindful of huh, is be strong huh. tag somebody and say I told you to be strong huh. you cannot hang out with weak and be strong my last point thank you Holy Ghost you say ouch y'all there's some people in this season that you've just got to say I love you, but I can't. It is, it's not feeding me. It's making me weak. Y'all don't act like y'all have no weak spots. But if you hang out with liars 
and you were a liar, <laughs> you're going to be a liar again. <laughs> if, if you were... Uh, if you were a cusser, that cussing thing is still in you, Cookie. <laughs> you just got it submerged in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Y'all not screaming back at me. <laughs> but if you start hanging out with people that's cussing, because <laughs> you say you're trying to bring them to God, <laughs> sooner or later they're going to bring you back to where you was. <laughs> Y'all scream back at me. <laughs> but you've got to be cooked up with people <laughs> that when you say glory, they say hallelujah. <laughs> when you say thank you, Jesus, <laughs> they get happy all by themselves. Will you grab your neighbor's hand and say, I dare you to say glory. Now somebody scream up in here. So, so if, if, if I don't answer your, your text message because you told a dirty joke, don't get mad at me. I ain't in no carnal mind right now. <laughs> I'm trying to get more Jesus on the inside. <laughs> and you operating in your flesh. <laughs> and you're going to try to mess me up. <laughs> the devil is a liar. <laughs> Pull away from that person. <laughs> and go grab somebody else and say, when I say glory, I dare you to say hallelujah. Somebody scream up and a few verses down, he says, he says, turn not from it to the right or to the left, that thou mayest prosper. Whether so ever thy goest. So look at somebody and say, the wealth that God promised me is coming in my direction. It's okay if everybody didn't get that. I say the wealth. I, I know you want to prosper, but I said the wealth. Y'all not talking back to me. <laughs> I, I, I know you like having fluid money. I, I, I'm, I'm the girl. This, I like to have cash. You know, my kids always say, Mama got some cash somewhere. A, a real woman always got some cash somewhere. Don't ever let her fool you. She got some cash somewhere. But, 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 but hear this. We're laughing, but hear this. Too many of us are caught in wanting prosperity when God is trying to give us generational wealth. Y'all not screaming back at me <laughs> because generational wealth, Bishop, <laughs> say that I leave it to my son and my daughter, <laughs> but there's enough for my grandchildren <laughs> and then there's enough for them that I may not never see. <laughs> Tag somebody and say what God is getting ready to release <laughs> is generational money. <laughs> say money, money, money. <laughs> say if I'm in a movement <laughs> and there is a manifestation, <laughs> there has got to be money. <laughs> Y'all not screaming because <laughs> the Lord <laughs> is with us my last part is verse number nine he says let me repeat myself have I not commanded thee be strong and of good courage don't be afraid because God has not given us the spirit of fear but power, love, and a sound mind. I shine that it will hold Tag your neighbor and say, neighbor, I just sat next to you to remind you on this 22nd year of Bishop's anniversary that the Lord, he is with us. Say, no matter what has happened in the past nine months, there's a turnaround that's getting ready to happen now. I wish I had a prophetic church. I said, there is a turnaround. Around. That's getting ready to happen. I just wish I could prophesy. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I prophesy over you that this 
prophecy is uh, the 90 days uh, that God's going to show you uh, what 24 looks like. Uh, there are uh, money coming to you, uh, movement coming to you, uh, and manifestation uh, that's coming to your life. Uh, now praise Him, uh, cause the Lord, uh, He's with us. Uh, everybody uh, can leave us, uh, but the Lord. Uh, is with us, with us in the morning, with us in the new day, with us in darkness, with us in light. Somebody scream and say, The Lord is with us. Now take it personally and say, The Lord is with me and praise Him. I said the Lord, I said the Lord, my friends can lead me, but the Lord is with me. Y'all not taking it, but say it again until it registers in your spirit. They may not call me, but the Lord is with me. They may separate from me, but the Lord is with me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Somebody scream, the Lord is with me. Somebody scream and say, the Lord is with me. Y'all ain't saying it, cause the more you say it, the more he'll leap. The more you say it, the greater the anointing. The more you say it, he'll sit on it. The Lord is with me. Now praise him. In my car, he's with me. On my job, he's with me. In the air, he's with me. On a good day, he's with me. When I'm losing it, he's with me. Somebody scream, the Lord is with me. Now praise him. Praise him. Praise him until you get anointed. Praise him. Praise him until he sit on you. Praise him until the glory of the Lord rests on you. I said, open your mouth and praise him. Can't nobody be with me like God. Can't nobody satisfy me like God. Can't nobody make a way for me like God. The Lord is with us. Now praise Him. Oh, I dare you to scream up in here. Somebody scream up in here. Somebody give Him glory. Somebody bless Him. He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. He's with me all the way. I said all the way. I said all the way. I said all the way. I dare you to take a step and say he's with me all the way. He's with us all the way. 23, 24, he's with us. Somebody get somebody by the hand and say, the Lord is with us. Now praise him. <laughs> 